Hello everybody and welcome back to another Rust tutorial video. Today we got a video that's a little bit different to the usual videos that I like to create. This video is going to be going over how to create your own Rust server so that you can play locally on your own machine as well as let your friends join. Alright everybody, I hope you enjoy this style of video and if you do make sure to leave a like and a comment below. But alright, let's jump into it shall we? To make this process easier for you, I've already went ahead and created a folder called Rust Server Package you can download in the description below. It takes you to a Dropbox share link that will download the folder with the server resources inside. I've already went ahead and did all of the hard work and created a bat file that installs all the prerequisites that you will need to host the Rust server. This will be installing a Rust server component as well as a Steam CMD. Both of these components are necessary to host your own server. All this bat does is do the hard work for you. It also configures the launcher for the Rust server so you don't have to do it later. But we'll get into more detail about that later. So what you need to do now after you've downloaded the Rust server package, you need to extract that within your downloads folder and then choose a spot where you would like the server to be put. So for the purpose of demonstration for this video, I chose my C drive. I created a file called Rust server and I'm just about to put that package in there as seen in the video. Now I'd like you to paste your package in that folder. Now I want you to go through and here we can have a read of some of the details that we've set. So for the port that the Rust server will be using, I've already went and preset that so you don't need to worry about doing that. What that allows us to do within the F1 command console within Rust, you can connect to the server either by typing client.connect localhost or client.connect xyz port. If you choose to change that port, that is no issue. It's up to you. Here within the folders, I have listed some guides out that explain what each bat file does and also the process to be able to install the Rust server. If you have trouble following this video, please refer to these guides and if they are not able to explain it, please feel free to add me on Discord and ask me any questions. I will link my Discord in the description below. What I want you to do is to execute the bat file that is located in the Rust server folder. What's going to happen now is it's going to download all of the required prerequisites from the Steam CMD that we need to be able to host our own Rust server. Once this is done, Now that that is done, this will automatically close. You don't need to worry about that. That part's done. Steam CMD is already there. We don't need to worry about that. That there should have created a Rust server folder within the other folder that you had. Now I want you to click the launch.bat option. This is going to bring up the Rust server launcher. Now, this is going to be the first time that this will be launching. So please expect these wait times to be a little bit longer than what you're seeing in the video than what you're seeing in the video. You also will have noticed a pop-up that popped up on my screen a few seconds ago. You can just click that. All that's allowing Rust to do is to talk to your local network or if somebody was actually to try to join your server, which they will be doing later on. Now, see that TCP error? That's completely fine. Don't need to worry about that. That's normal. Now, we wanna add you as an owner to your own server. So you wanna type owner ID space and now we need to get your steam id so go to steam.io type in your url for your username and then type in the url for your steam profile and then you'll get your 64 id you want to paste that in after the owner id that they will activate you as the owner to your server note if you do this after you have launched the server you will not have admin permissions you will need to restart rust now a few ways to connect to the server like i mentioned as before you can type client.connect space localhost or you can type client.connect space the port but we're going to do client.connect localhost this will be connecting you to your server now if this step fails please rerun the video or feel free to message me on discord and i'll be more than happy to help all right you've did it you successfully hosted your own server on rust you can, you're free to do whatever you want now. You can go into the items tab within the F1 menu and then get whatever you want. There is a lot of commands that you can do within Rust. One that I'm using now is the debug command. This allows you to fly around in the world. There's also a couple others like God mode, infinite ammo, day and time settings, as well as settings to be able to create cinematics within Rust. If you would like a more detailed explanation of these commands, please let me know in the comments and I'll work on a video for that soon. Now onto the more exciting part of the video, the port forwarding, or 
where you can actually host the server for your friends to join. Here, what I'm going to need you to do first is open up CMD. Once you have CMD open, I need you to type ipconfig. And as you can see right here, you will see a default gateway. What you need to do then is to paste it into your browser. And what we have here is, so what we have here is your modem login page. What you're going to need to do from this is you're going to need to find out your username and password to be able to access the interface for your network settings. This can typically be found on the back of your router or modem. Alright, now what you're going to be looking for since you're logged in is you will see a few options. My option here to be able to configure port settings is called WAN services. Yours might be known by a few different names such as NAT, Security, Gaming, advanced setup, firewall, or virtual services. Now, if it's any of those following options besides NAT, they're more than most likely gonna be under your advanced tab settings. Now, depending on what router you have and who is your service provider, these interfaces will differ. All right, now that you've located your port forwarding tab, what you're going to want to do is locate the IVP4 port mapping. Now what you're going to want to do here, you're going to want to set the name, set the protocol as TCP. You can set the name to Rust server or whatever you like, but the protocol must be TCP. And for the port that we'll be using, the port that we'll be using is 28015. This is the port that we predefined in the bat file. Now if you've went ahead and changed that, you're going to need to allocate the port correspondingly. So if you've changed the port in the bat file, you're going to need to make sure that that port that you changed is the same one in your modem port forwarding settings. You're going to want to make sure that you're putting the port in both VLAN as well as LAN port, otherwise this won't work. Now within your settings, we need to define the server's host IP. So what you're going to need to do is reopen your CMD and find IVP4. This is going to be your machine's local IP address and place that in the destination IP field. Now that we've configured the modem, we can start on configuring the server host PC. So you want to open the firewall and port settings on your computer. You want to go create a new inbound rule, assign the port as the same one that we did within the modem settings, put it as TCP, allow the connections and then name the inbound rule. You can just minimize that tab after you're done setting those rules. What you want to do now is navigate to umod.org. I'll also have this linked into the description. You want to navigate to the games tab and then click on Rust. You're going to click the download button. You're going to wait for this here to download. Place it in your downloads folder of where you want it to go. From within your downloads folder, you're going to extract it. Now this will extract into your downloads folder. And then what we want to do from there is copy that file and place it in our server folder that we did previously. This is going to ask us to override some things, but you don't need to worry about that. You can just paste it in there. That's exactly what we want to happen. Now that we've pasted the file in the server directory, we're going to want to launch the launcher. <laughs> okay, once we've launched the launcher, we're going to be waiting for the oxidized files to pass on through. Now what this is going to happen, this is going to create all of the backend stuff that you don't need to worry about for our plugins to work. As you can see right here, some files were made. That's exactly what we want to see. Now while we're waiting for Oxidized and the Rust server to fully start, let's navigate back to UMod and navigate to the plugin section. You're going to want to click Rust and then you're going to want to go and click the search button. So once you've clicked the search button, it's going to provide you with a list of plugins to choose from. Now here, you can use the search button or the filters on the right to be able to choose what style of plugins that you want to use. Now there's a whole variety, so take your time and do some research into ones that you think would best suit your server. Now that you've chosen your plugin, you can click the download button. What will happen there, it will prompt you to download, we're going to do the same thing as we did with Oxidize before. Except for extracting the file, we're going to be copying the file back to our directory and we're actually going to be pasting it in the Oxidize directory and we're going to be placing it in the plugins folder. You want to control C on that file from downloads and control V in the folder that I just did. What you're going to want to do from here is go and restart your Rust server. Now this is going to prompt the plugins to load and for Oxidize to reload in. Now that you've started your server again, you can go and relaunch Rust. Now from here, we can test the connection method via our IP. So you want to do client.connect and then type your IP address in. Now if this here works, it means you've set up the port forwarding correctly as well as the server configuration. Now that's great. We've got here. We did it. We've made our own server that our friends can join us on. Woohoo!
that options are endless with how you want to configure it. I want to thank you all for watching the video and if you have any further questions or queries please feel free to join the discord and send me a message I'll be more than happy to help you out where I can alternatively you can leave a comment below and I'll do my best to respond with an answer hey guys thanks for Again, watching the video if you liked it please drop a sub and a like it would be greatly appreciated new video coming soon also let me know what you want to see next wixel out peace